Welcome to this demonstration of the HDF5 virtual file driver for the Hadoop Distributed File System, or HDFS. In this demonstration, we will show you an example environment with HDF5 and HDFS. How to place an HDF5 file on HDFS using Hadoop. How to extract metadata and raw data from an HDF5 or NetCDF4 file on HDFS with the command line tools H5LS and H5Dump. And, finally, how to use Hadoop Streaming to collect data from multiple HDF5 files. To begin, several prerequisites must be in place. A version of HDF5 with the HDFS VFD enabled. For this demonstration, we are using HDF5 version 1.10.4. A compatible version of Hadoop. For this demonstration, we are using version 3.1.1, though what we show you today may work with other versions a running instance of HDFS. This instance could be either local on your machine or as part of a cluster accessed over a network. At THG and in this demonstration, we emulate a cluster with the pseudo distributed mode of HDFS on a networked machine. For more information about running HDFS, please see the Hadoop documentation. Both Hadoop and HDFS VFD rely on the environment variables Java Home Hadoop Home, and Class Path being set to reflect your environment. Additionally, the HDFS VFD requires shared libraries from HDF5, Hadoop, and Java, libhdf5.so, libhdfs.so, and libjvm.so, respectively, and the paths to these must be appended to your LD library path. If you build or have built the HDFS VFD, you will probably have set these already. For the sake of convenience during this demonstration, we have also placed the command line tools for HDF5 and HDFS on our path. If the environment is configured correctly, when we execute this Hadoop list command, we should get a listing of the root directory of our HDFS instance. As you can see, directories exist of benchmarks, HBase, temp, user, and var. To proceed with our demonstration, we would like to start by copying an HDF5 file into HDFS. You could use an existing HDF5 file or NetCDF4 file of your own, though we will create a new HDF5 file called sample.h5 using the h5 make group tool. Beneath the root group, indicated by the leading slash, we'll have a group named A. Beneath A, group, few. Beneath few, group, groups. In all, three nested groups beneath root and it reads as the highly imaginative, a few groups. Then we'll use ls to show that our file really exists. Now that we have our HDF5 file, we will copy it into the temp subdirectory of our HDFS instance. To do that, we'll use the Hadoop executable HDFS to perform the copy, which we placed on our path as a convenience during setup. HDFS DFS dash copy from local, the name of our file, sample.h5, and the URL to the temp subdirectory on our HDFS instance. We could also use put instead of copy from local. You could substitute your own HDF5 file or files in place of sample.h5, or you could copy the sample to a different path on HDFS. That done, we will use Hadoop list HDFS DFS ls to show that the file is indeed present on HDFS. This concludes our sample setup. Now we will look at how we can use HDFS with the HDF5 command line tool H5LS. H5LS is one of the standard tools provided with the library and allows users to look at the structure of HDF5 files. H5LS has been augmented to operate with the HDFS VFD. The new argument here, HDFS Atters, accepts a formatted tuple string of five elements in order, each separated by a comma, name node name, name node port, Gerberos cache path, username, and buffer size. Empty elements, such as you see here with the trailing commas, use default values. To specify the HDFS VFD, we use dash dash VFD equals HDFS. Without this, a default file driver will be used, probably POSIX. Because our example is remote instead of local, we must supply the full name of our cluster name node, in our case, Jelly on HDF group, and the port number on which the cluster is configured to listen, in our case, 8020. The other three attributes are not relevant to this example, 
and are left empty for default values. The remaining argument, r, tells hyvls to list items recursively, or all of them, and finally we provide the file path. Note that the path is slash temp slash sample.h5, where we put our file on hdfs. By providing the hdfs vfd argument, the path is understood to be a URL to the hdfs resource. We can see the three groups we created, in addition to the root group. Your result will probably differ if you used your own file. We can of course demonstrate a more complex example. Here we have a netcdf4 file that contains a large number of items, on the order of 300. Because there are so many items in this file, we'll use head to grab only the first 50 lines. We specify the HDFS VFD and configure it with HDFS adders. Again, this file is hosted on our HDFS instance and not our local machine storage, but with two arguments, HILS behaves as if it were on disk. H5Dump is another command line tool that comes with HDF5 library and allows you to view very detailed information about items in the file. For example, groups and datasets, attributes and data types associated with those items, and data stored in datasets. Like H5LS, H5Dump has also been augmented to accept the HDFS VFD, and with only a few arguments will behave as though our file on HDFS were on local storage. In this example, we are interested in object properties and the file's superblock, dash p, uppercase b, respectively. We also explicitly tell the tool to use the HDFS VFD. Because the tools are inconsistent in their arguments, this time we use dash dash file driver instead of dash dash VFD as we did with H5LS. Without this file driver argument, H5Dump will look for our files on disk and fail. If your HDFS instance is not on localhost, you must supply the host's name node and port to the HDFS adder's argument, as we saw with H5LS. Here we are supplying the name node and port to our HDFS instance on HDF groups Jelly in its listening port 8020. Again note the file path is to the file we put on HDFS, slash temp slash sample.h5. When we execute this, we will see detailed information as expected from H5Dump on an HDF5 file, superblock, and our four nested groups. We can demonstrate this on our more complex example, again the net CDF4 file we saw with H5LS. The additional argument, capital H, limits output to only object headers, or metadata. Because we are not dumping any data, and for the sake of brevity, we pipe the output ahead again to limit the output to the first 50 lines. A common use for H5Dump is to visually inspect the data stored in an HDF5 file. Our handmade example, sample.h5, contains only groups and no datasets, so we will be using our netcdf4 example again, where there are plenty of datasets. We know in advance, by running another h5dump operation perhaps, that the dataset output slash flux function profiles slash poetal flux area exists in the file, and that it is a two-dimensional dataset. We select it with the argument dash d. Because these datasets can be quite large, in this case almost 23,000 by 33, we will limit the selection to a 10 by 10 grid, starting with coordinates 00, zero dash s for start offset, and selecting a hyperslab or block of dimensions 1010, dash k for block. Again, notice the HDFS file driver and HDFS address arguments from before. When we run this, we will see the dataset's selected contents and associated metadata. The output has wrapped to fit the default 80 character column width. Benefits in using Hadoop include the ability to examine multiple files concurrently and to use environments such as Hadoop Streaming for task coordination and task generation. We will be demonstrating a proof of concept example with Hadoop Streaming. If you are not familiar with Hadoop Streaming, we recommend that you investigate the official documentation. The gist is that you can use Hadoop Streaming to take nearly any executable – C code you wrote and compiled, a Python script, even standard utilities – and use them as mappers and reducers to process your data. Here we have a rough example showing how one might use streaming with basic Unix utilities, 
to count the number of files in our inputs. The input and output details are not implemented, so we won't execute this, but it does suggest the overall structure of a Hadoop streaming invocation. We have implemented a mapper reducer in C using the HDFS VFD, which counts the number of group, dataset, and data type objects in each file that it encounters, and we will be demonstrating its use. The source is available on GitHub. The files we'll be operating on are listed in two files, input1 and input2, both on our HDFS instance. We are using two inputs to create multiple mapper tasks, or splits. The job is so small that combining both inputs in a single list will generate only a single task. We can look at the entire list with this HDFS cat command and see that it includes a number of HDF5 files, as well as our sample.h5 and netcdf files from earlier. The mapper component will create a listing directly corresponding to our input, associating each file name with a comma-separated triple for each group, dataset, and data type object count in that file. The reducer then takes that triple and reformats it to the final result shown here. We will use a small script for clarity. We see the URL to our HDFS instance in the temp directory where we've placed everything the names of our input files and output directories, the wrapper shell script and reducer. We will also tell Hadoop that we want two mapper tasks and three reducer tasks, this more to demonstrate that our application here might scale. Commands to clean up from previous runs, if any, then the Hadoop invocation to stream and map reduce with our settings. Again, notice the two input arguments. Finally, we print the output generated from the operation. When we execute this, we see the cleanup, an execution log from Hadoop, and finally, the formatted output as we expect. The majority follow a very consistent eight groups, five datasets, and no committed data type objects. The HE5 files all come from the same mission, so that uniformity is to be expected. We also see our sample.h5 file with its four groups, three under root, and the netcdf4 file with its many interesting objects. In summary, you can use the HDFS VFD to continue doing everything you have been doing on your HDF5 files, and can make use of unique capabilities afforded by Hadoop. No significant changes are required to your application code to access your files on HDFS through the HDFS VFD. HDF5 tools allow you to perform common tasks on HDF5 compatible files on HDFS. Hadoop's environment, such as streaming and MapReduce operations we just saw, can be used in conjunction with your own HDFS VFD-enabled software to process files in HDF5-compatible format. Thank you.